World War 3 is on the way, or is it? Nobody actually knows. So there's no need to panic. But we could all be dead soon. So we're only a week and a half into the new year and already Australia is on fire. 24 people have died. Millions of animals as well have died along in the fire and it's honestly just heartbreaking to watch Australia burning and so much devastation for one country. It's horrible. In other sad news, uh, the legend that was Derek Akora from Most Haunted died and I know it might seem like I'm taking the piss but I'm honestly not. I thought he was a legend. He was like, it was a sad start to the year that he also died. Mary loves Dick. Mary loves Dick. But I think the most controversial thing that people have been talking about so far this year is definitely World War Three. What's the crack? My name is David Kelly. I'm the Irish Guy Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. And now I'm going to talk about World War Three, where we're all going to die. Yay! So if you've been absent since the start of the year with a colossal hangover, or maybe you just tuned out because sometimes you do that in January. Basically, Donald Trump put out an order for the Iranian military leader, Qasem Soleimani, to be assassinated. And he was. Trump killed him, and now fears of World War Three have kicked off. Thanks, Donald, you feckin' idiot. To be honest, the memes have been fantastic, but like this is honestly scary stuff. If a war was to break out nowadays, like it would be a war like we've never seen before. Obviously, technology would win the war, and America has a lot of technology, and by technology I mean super weapons, like uh, nuclear bombs and things like that. Weapons that could wipe out entire countries if they wanted to, and I bet you, I can guarantee you that Trump's fingers are literally over the, just over the buttons, just waiting for someone to step out of line so that he can just say, mm, gotcha. China. But the timing of this whole thing is really suspect because if you remember a couple of weeks ago back Trump was impeached and then a couple of days later he went and killed the Iranian leader and now there's fears of World War 3. And a lot of people know the only guaranteed way for a president to stay in power after they've been impeached is to go to war with someone as soon as possible and it looks like that's what's happening. So Trump gets impeached, a couple of days later he kills the Iranian military leader and then boom we've got World War 3 on our doorstep. Like. <laughs> And there's actually a video clip online of Trump talking a few years ago about Obama when he was in office saying that Obama was weak and that he would probably start a war with Iran so that he would get re-elected. And now years later Trump is in office and he's actually doing the same thing that he talked about or it looks like he's doing the same thing which is just mental. Like I think he's either dumb, genius or like he's just rubbing it in people's faces and thinking that they're so dumb they won't believe this kind of stuff you know and that they'll just literally feed off his word and buy whatever he says which is just wrong like how can one man have so much of well i call him a man he's not actually a man he's more of a baby but how can one person have so much of an effect on the world like how can one person change the perception of the entire world so much why do we give one person so much power and i think because of the fact that trump knows that he's in such a position of power that feeds him like you know i bet he's standing behind a pedestal with a boner knowing that yeah everyone's talking about me everyone's focused on me because he's an egomaniac and all he wants is for people to talk about him and he kicked off the start of the year with him being like the most controversial thing and that's what he wanted to do you know he got his free publicity or whatever he wants to look like a strong leader because he's going to be re-elected you know if something was to happen well i'll be ready that's what the people who follow him want is they want to know that he's actually ready to do something they don't want the war they just want to know that he's actually ready if something does happen and that's what he wanted to show them which is just like so childish but I bet he gets off on knowing that he pulls the strings and controls the world in some kind of way. I bet he does get off on that. But I think he has honestly lost touch with reality. So there's a book called The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump where 27 psychiatrists evaluated Donald Trump from a distance. They said that all the signs of Trump's past behaviour and current things that are going on, all the signs point that Trump is severely unstable and he should not be given access to any nuclear weapons. But he has all the access that he wants. Like if he says the word, the nukes go out. It's honestly crazy. There's so many videos online about his mental health about how unstable he is and no one really seems to be talking about it. It's scary stuff that one person has so much power this should never happen. One person should never be given access to so much power. No, it shouldn't happen. But if World War III did break out, it would be absolutely life-changing for every one of us. And some of you might not agree, you know, you might think, oh, well, it's just America and Iran, I mean, how will it affect me? So to me, it could be a bit closer to home, because I was reading online the other day that Donald Trump's golf club in Dunbeg, which is about 10 miles up the road from me, is one of the targets that could be hit by Iran if uh, war does happen, because it's like one of Trump's uh, assets or whatever. And I was just like, what? <laughs> like seriously? Like the hotel up the road is like on the, on the list of targets that Iran are gonna hit? Like what? To think that a terrorist attack could happen anywhere is bad enough, but to think that one could happen up the road where there's people who I know that work there and it's just like horrible to think that that could happen. It's like scary as well, like. But some people watching this might not know that Ireland in general is an actual target because America have been flying in warplanes here for years. Into Ireland, they've been landing them at Shannon Airport, which is about 
40 miles that direction. You can find them in refueling and then find them off to the Middle East where they go and bomb people or drop off troops or send supplies or whatever. And Ireland are meant to be neutral, so should a neutral country be letting America fly in to like refuel and stuff to go off and kill people? Because Ireland say we're neutral and we don't kill people, but we'll help the people that kill the people. So it's kind of like a hollow stance, you know? I mean, in a court of law, that's accessory to murder. You're helping murderers, you know? So, uh... <laughs> so I don't think we're neutral, really, if the Irish government are helping the American government to do things like this. See, I don't know if war broke out here, if people in Ireland would be conscripted, if we'd be drafted into the military. I really haven't a clue, because I don't fully understand our neutrality. I'm only basing it on, on our behaviour to help the Americans refueling and stuff. So I don't know if we'd be conscripted if war actually did break out. But if World War III did break out, do you think that you'd be conscripted or that your country would actually help out either side? I would really love to know, so if you think so or if not, let me know in the comments down below. But if, if war does break out and it gets bad enough, all the UN has to do is pass a mandate and any country that falls within the UN will have basically have to sign up. That's if it gets bad enough. So yeah, we've got that to look forward to. But one great thing I did see in all of this was the American people standing up. The American people went out onto the street and they protested. They basically let Trump know, we don't want this war. You know, if, if you start this war, it's all on you. And it was nice to see people who were for Trump and against Trump, even though they had differences, they all got together and united in peace. It was nice to see because they're usually divided and they have been divided for a long time and especially more since Trump came to office. But it was nice to see the American people saying that we don't want the war with Iran, we don't want a war with anyone. And I was very happy to see that, and it was nice, and it was nice to see that there's a glimmer of hope. The people aren't all behind Trump. The kind of thinking behind how America sees themselves is different, and it has changed. And I think when Trump saw that the people were reacting that way, he started to back away a little and started to quieten down. So over the past couple of days, it has quietened down a little bit. But see, I think this is where the danger lies. Because I think Trump doesn't want to be seen as the person who kicked it off fully. Like, he, he poked the bear, he kind of like did get it started a little bit, but now that he's backing off, if war does kick off, he won't look as guilty. So I think he's waiting for Iran to do something. And I don't think Iran would do something. So this is just a theory and it might sound like I'm like a crazy conspirator. But I honestly wouldn't be surprised that within the next couple of weeks, months, if we see a large terrorist attack somewhere in America blamed on the Iranians. So that way the American government have a valid reason to attack another country. A false flag operation basically. And we know how fond the American government are of false flag operations like Operation Northwood. Day of Pigs, 9-11, <coughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if something big does happen. Like, I really hope Trump doesn't get voted in again, I really hope he's like literally thrown out onto the street, that's basically what he deserves. And like, I know I sound like a crazy conspirator, and that's probably why I don't get into politics, because uh, I, I end up linking all the politics to conspiracies that I've heard of over the years, or things that I think are going on, and then I end up in these conspiracy corners, and I end up spiraling out of control, and I have to go and get my tinfoil hat and put it on, and it just messes up my hair and stuff, and it just, it just, it just annoys me, you know? You know, I just don't get involved, and I end up kind of spiraling into this, like, conspiracy avenue that I don't really like to think about, because, like, I have other more important things going on in my life, what are more important things that I actually want to do before the whole cookie crumbles. The least I spend thinking about conspiracies and things that might not actually be going on, the better. But saying that I am starting a dedicated YouTube conspiracy channel, no I'm not, I'm joking. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, sometimes you just kind of stumble into these dark conspiracy corners and it's hard to get out of because like the world seems dark sometimes and the only way of explaining it is by dark things going on, you know? But that's not always the case, thankfully. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Do you think we're on the brink of war or do you think we can pull it back and save ourselves? Or do you think we can dodge the Cold War again? Or will we end up wiping ourselves out with nuclear weapons? Let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you all again next Friday. Bye.